In this video, I'm going to show you how you can have touch input in your mobile app, as well as how to use the canvas in Kivi, which will allow you to draw shapes and lines in your app. Now let's get right into it. Hello everyone, welcome back to Short Code. If this is your first time here and you want to learn how to code, then start now by subscribing and clicking the bell down below so you don't miss any future videos. So today we're going to be learning about touch input in Kivi, and this will allow your app to become more interactive, and we'll also be covering how to use the canvas. The canvas lets you draw lines and shapes on your screen. So I'm here in a new Python file. We've just got a class called myLabel and it inherits from label. And then in the init method, we call the init method in the label class. And then we set self.text to text, which is this parameter here. And then we have our myApp class. It, in it inherits from app. In the build method, we instantiate myLabel and set it to this label, and the parameter is high, and then we return the label. Let's just take a look if we run it right now. So we can see we just get a label called high, and by setting self.text equals text here, it's basically the same thing as using a normal label class. Now let's talk about touch input. In Kivi, there are three events that can happen with touch input. They are when the user puts their finger down, when the user lifts their finger up, and when the user moves their finger across the screen. Now we can override these methods in the myLabel class, which means we won't have to do any binding methods, we can just define the methods directly in the myLabel class. Here we can just write some functions for the touch functionality. So when the user touches down on the screen, it will print out down, and then it will also print the position of the touch. And it's the same for up, apart from when the user lifts their finger from the screen, it will print up and the position of the touch. When we move our finger across the screen, it'll print move and also print the positions of those touches. So if we run it now, we can see if we just click down once, we get printed out, we get down, and this mouse motion event, which has the positions, and we also get an up. When we press down, we're pressing down, and then we're also lifting it up. So that's why we get a down event and a up event. Now let's try moving our mouse while pressing down across the screen as though we're sliding our finger along the screen. We can see we get move events, and then once we stop and lift it up, we get an up. We also got a down event right there. So now let's talk about canvas. The Kivi canvas is a way to get other shapes and lines onto the screen rather than just having normal widgets like your label or button. So you'll be able to draw like a circle or some lines or whatever. And we can also combine touch input with the canvas so we can actually make a drawing app. So I'm just going to clean up the code we have here. And now we'll need to import the ellipse class to draw some ellipses. And we'll also need to import a widget class, which is just a base widget. It's the standard class in Kivi. We haven't actually used it before, but it's just it's just like a default widget that we can use. And actually, I think we won't use an ellipse. Let's actually use a rectangle instead. So you can use an ellipse. I just want to use a rectangle. So the rectangle class will just allow us to create rectangles on our canvas. And the widget class will just be able to hold our canvas that we're going to draw the rectangle on. And now let's create our own class, which will inherit from widget. And now we can edit the class so that when the user touches down, we can draw a rectangle onto the canvas. So here we're just instantiating a rectangle. So we're setting its X position to be where the X touches, and we're also setting its Y position to be where the Y touches. And then we're just setting the size to 50-50. And in the build method, we'll also need to return my widget. So if we run it now, we can see we just get an empty screen, but when we press down, you can get a rectangle, or it's actually a square, of size 50-50, and it's wherever we touch. By the way, if you are finding this video useful, a like would be appreciated. So we can take this further by drawing lines behind our finger when we drag it along the screen. So first off, let's just remove what we've got in my widget, and we'll also want to import line. Now after we've done this, we'll need to create a touch dictionary. This is a dictionary of the positions where our finger has been while moving it along the screen. And this means that we'll be able to get these positions from the dictionary and draw a line on top of those positions. And to make this dictionary, we'll need the onTouchDown method. 
and then we'll also need to create the dictionary. So this looks a bit complicated, but basically what we're doing is we're creating the touch dictionary of lines here, and then we're setting it equal to the first position of the line. So at the moment it's just set to one point on the screen, it's not actually our line at the moment. And then we're just adding the touch dictionary to the canvas. Now we need to add the new points when we move our finger along the screen. So in the onTouch move method. So basically this is quite complicated, but you can think of touch.ud as a list of points. And initially we're setting just the first item in the list of points just to be one point, which is where we initially lay our finger down when we're touching it. Then we add that list of points to the canvas. And then when we move our finger along it, we're going to add the touch.x and touch.y. So if we run it now, we can see we just get a black screen. And then when we touch down and move our mouse, we can see we get a line and it just follows our cursor and we can just draw anything we want. Now this was quite complicated, so if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them down below. If you would like to see how to use lambdas in Python, then you can click on this video here. Otherwise, that's it from me. Cheers and goodbye.